Morning guys, um, Chris here from the Pro Shop. Just want to show you one of the other hats that I uh, put on in my daily roll. Um, just something that we're doing at the moment is we're doing a set of, we're doing a lie check for one of our members. Uh, we've been out there and we've had him hit some shots on the impact board. Um, he is going away soon so he just wants to make sure that his clubs are right for his holiday. Um, and yeah, we're just going to check his lies and if we need to we'd obviously adjust them as well. So um, let me just show you how it works and, and just gives you an insight into some of the things that we do do. Okay, right, so this is the Loft and Lime machine here. Um, you see it sitting in the shop, you probably don't necessarily understand why it's here. You probably just think it's um, something to, for us to hang our stock on. Um, it's not, it's functional. Um, all PGA training academies and centers do need to have these, um, which is rare to be honest with you. Um, but we you know we try and keep up to date with everything possible. You know, obviously we've got the flight scopes and stuff like that. This to me is just part of the day-to-day -day requirement of being a PGA Pro. So let's just let's get this loaded in. Uh, just to let you know, these clubs that are tailor-made are blades, okay? Uh, which is uh, it was quite a nice model. Sergio Garcia was quite famous for using it. Um, he put it straight in the bag, got a lot more distance out of it. It's an older model, about 2013. Um, so over time, sometimes what you see is that um, clubs can move, you know, say for example you're someone who went to the driving range quite a lot, you'd find that the lie angle, there's a good chance that the lie angle might move after a sort of got quite hard and hit on the ground. Um, but it is a cast club, so there's one thing I would say from, from the outset is that with cast clubs, they tend not to move so much. Um, so there's a good chance, hopefully, um, that these will be as they were when he purchased them. Uh, but we'll get them in the, we'll get them in the machine. We'll have a look um, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll see where we're at. So the key to this really is positional. Um, you know, you, you, you've basically, I've got a right hand, um, if you just see my little finger raised in here, I can't zoom in unfortunately, I haven't got any help at this moment in time to show you this, but um, we've got like a brass adjustment where I can slide the club from, from, from left to right. Um, what that does is it just enables me to get the sole of the club grounded out in the machine. Okay, so that's held in position there. What I would then do is use the top top clamp here to clamp the machine down onto the five iron. As I say, this is a rocket ball five iron. Um, and what we would do then is, if we were looking to bend it straight away, this this one here I would con I would consider I would tighten considerably. Okay, but I'm not doing it at the moment. I'm just doing a light check, um, and then I'll worry about the the bending if I if if, if and when it's required. So what we then do is we move this little slider which goes to and from and left to right. Um, we move that in and we just have a look and see what the lies are. Okay, so this one here, this gauge here, this is showing me loft. Okay, and this angle here is showing me lie. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just call this out. So we're looking at 23 in the loft stage and we're looking at 60, I think it's 63, 62 in the line. So let's have a little look. Let me just check on that. Okay. So what we what we, what we should have, and what it is actually is, let me just double check that there. Is you have got the 62 in the line. Okay, and you have got the 23 in the loft. But I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to bring you around to show you the gauges that I'm looking at. So you can see there, I've had to come this side of the shaft to be able to show you this one. But you can see how here, that we're now on the 23, which is its current, which is what it should have been as a factory fitted uh, standard loft. Okay guys, so I just showed you there that on this uh, Rocket Ball 5 iron, the loft and lie angles were as, as what they should have been. But just to show you what the second part of the process would have been, say that they, either one of those had been out. So say for example that we wanted to lessen the lie angle, so we wanted to make it a flatter lie angle, what we'd have done, we'd have taken this bending bar, <coughs> slid it over, over the sort of the shaft, down and over the hosel, and we would have cranked this into position here so this would have been nice and tight. I would have then stood square in line, and what I would have done is I would have pushed straight down, okay, which in itself you can imagine would be flattening the hose on the shaft area there. That would have then obviously corrected the lie angle. Alternatively, if it needed to be more upright, you know, potentially more upright clubs are for people who are a lot taller. Um, that's 
you know, that's generally what you tend to find. Um, what I would have done is I would have stood a lot closer. I would have placed all my weight onto the bench. I would have then used the club here, made sure that I held it as tight as possible to the neck. That is key and paramount because if this starts going up and down the shaft, what we can do is we can we can get it wrong and we can do something called goosing, which would bend the shaft, bend the neck of the club out of, out of shape. Um, from that position there, I would have then applied the pressure, lifting upwards in this motion here, which again would have obviously made the club more upright. And then if we went on to loft, we would keep the, keep the bending bar, which is here, just to show you again. In position again, I would obviously have spun around this way. I'd have come out towards you. You can start to see, you can see the bottom of the bending bar. If I'd have placed my, you know, I'd have come this side of the, of the club. Again, weight placement is key. I'd put all my weight onto the, the machine. I'd then be pushing my weight down. Okay, and what that would do is that would weaken the loft. Okay, so if I'd weaken the loft, you imagine, because what it does is it pushes the club back that way, which increases the loft on the club face. Alternatively, what I would then I could have done also is if I lifted the club up, what I would then done I would have strengthened the loft. So we got the you know from from the same position in both cases you can you can obviously change the lie angle um, flatter more upright and you can also change the lofts to make them weaker and stronger. So that's what we might need to do. Um, obviously, I'll go through the rest of the set. Um, I will be doing that um, that process. Um, it takes a little bit of time, um, so I won't obviously bore you with that, but hopefully I've just shown you a little bit today of some of the things that, that we do do um, and perhaps that you should think about doing um, to make sure that your set's ready for the season. Thanks guys, and I'll speak to you soon.